Now there are a lot of details to untangle from all this. It can be very complicated and detailed considering this ruling that was handed down. Right now, I want to get to attorney David Cole. Thanks for joining us, David, and kind of help us untangle all this. What did you make of the justice's decision, especially given the length of time that Roe v. Wade has been in place? Well, that's the remarkable thing. Uh, the opinion focuses on Roe itself and in exhaustive detail says Roe just wasn't correctly decided. There was too much emphasis on medical philosophy and not enough on history of the Constitution, constitutional cases. But at the same time, Roe's been on the books 50 years, and the Supreme Court is historically very reluctant to change a case. It's been on the books that long, and the court talks about that issue as well in its opinion. Uh, but the focus of the, this particular opinion was on the one case, Roe, and just saying, we made a mistake and sometimes you just have to take a mistake off the books and start over again. It takes us back to 1972. There's already been talk that this opens the door to challenge other cases of precedent that have been on the books for a while. Do you see the Supreme Court possibly going down that road? It's certainly a possibility. The, the language, and we saw this in the draft that came out, this is substantially similar. Uh, Roe was based on sort of implied rights in the, from the Constitution of privacy and bodily integrity and so forth. And there is language in this opinion that sort of invites further discussion about those topics. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw challenges to contraceptive availability, uh, which is in the same general line of authority as Roe. I wouldn't be surprised to see innovative litigants trying to revisit the Supreme Court's recent holding about gay marriage. All oh, that's a step or two further down the road. But the opinion is written broadly and it does invite further litigation about the general concepts that were discussed in this opinion. Let's talk a little bit about what this means here in Texas. We know that there was a trigger law that was approved last legislative session that goes into effect once Roe v. Wade is overturned, which is now the case. What does that law lay out? And then how do you also enforce that law going forward? Yeah, so yeah, right. Texas is one of the trigger law states that says basically everything we had on the books before comes back to life. Uh, so as of now, the argument would be that the, the criminal statutes that were in place that were at issue in Roe versus Wade are now enforceable again. As to how you enforce them, remember the name Roe versus Wade. Wade was Henry Wade, the DA of Dallas County. And so it's up to district attorneys in, in counties to figure to decide whether or not, and if so, how much they want to prosecute someone for violating these criminal laws. Some DAs are going to be really into it. Some are not, and that's the nature of the job. They have substantial discretion. But it has gone from a matter of constitutional law to now a matter of local criminal law, like breaking and entering or burglary or anything else of that nature. What does this do to the perception of the Supreme Court? We heard that that perception took a hit when that leak happened. Does this only add to the angst and maybe the diminished view of the Supreme Court? I don't think it helps. I mean, the one side of it, if you like the opinion, you say that it enhances the court's legitimacy because they did the right thing, even though it's difficult. I think there are a number of people today who are celebrating who believe that Justice Alito was very brave to write this opinion. I think a larger group of people are saying, Really, guys, the only reason this changed was because of intervening presidential elections that changed the makeup of the court. You're no different than Congress or a state legislature when you get right to it. And that's a powerful criticism of a court, of an institution that's supposed to be kind of above politics. So the Supreme Court's had a rough year uh, in dealing with the, the, child, the argument that, hey, you guys are just a political branch of government too. This opinion doesn't help with that. And it's going to be a challenging couple of years for the court to make sure that people continue to give them the respect they traditionally have received. As we said, very tangled. Thank you so much, David Cole, for helping you. sort through this with us.